Okay, close your eyes. And make up your mind that you're going to stay with the breath for the rest of the hour. Watch the breath as it's coming in. And watch it as it's going out. And remember to stay here. It's very easy to forget. So you're basically doing three things. You make the intention to stay, which is your intention moving into the future. And then you watch what's actually happening right here and right now. How does the breath feel? Where do you feel it? When you breathe in, take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths to begin with. Notice where you feel the breath and how it feels. Does it feel comfortable? Or is it too long, too short, too heavy, too light, too fast, too slow? You can make adjustments if you want. In fact, it's important that you do make adjustments. Otherwise, it's very easy to get tired of the breath. bored with the breath, and your mind will begin to want, want to go someplace else. So that's two things right there, willing to stay here, wanting to stay here. And the second one is actually watching what's going on here, being attentive, being alert. And then the third part is to remember that you made that intention. You set out that intention to stay here, and you want to stay here. You also would remember any good lessons you've learned from the past, if you've meditated before. How did you get the mind to settle down? What worked? What didn't work? Okay, remember those things. This is how we train the mind. It requires these three functions. Your willing, your intention that moves into the future. Your intention to stay here, your intention to be discerning. One of the Thai Johns, John Cha, talks about how discernment has to come from desire. If you don't really want to find true happiness, you can sit here and watch your breath for aeons and you're not going to get anywhere. So the desire is important. Your intention is important. And your attention, the quality of focusing on the present, that's important as well. You want to be really sensitive to how the breathing feels. And you put those two together. If you notice the breath isn't feeling good, you realize that in a short time you're going to be wandering off someplace. So try to make it feel as comfortable as possible. This is how your desire to stay here actually helps you stay here. All too often desire gets out of control. You simply want the results, but you don't think about how you're going to gain them, or you don't want to pay attention to how you gain them. And so the desire actually becomes an obstacle. But if you realize, if you really pay attention to the present moment, you've got things to play with here. You can play with the length of the breath, how deep it goes, how heavy or light it is. These are things you can do in the present moment. And as for your memory of the past, that too can get in the way if you don't use it skillfully. If you think about how great some past meditation was and the current meditation isn't nearly that good. You just get depressed or get anxious. That's a misuse of your memory. You want to be selective in what you remember. Remember that you made your intention to stay with the breath. And you're going to try to remember the things that worked. Not so much how good things were in the past, but what, what made them good. That's something worth bringing with you into the present moment. It's like you're traveling. You have to carry your belongings in a knapsack. You don't want to carry too much. You don't want to carry things that will make it impossible for you to move forward. 
but you also want to carry enough to keep you going. Enough food. If you're going to spend the night out, you need a tent. You want to take along just what's needed. So we're developing these three qualities, your will, your attention, and your memory. And then as you train them, you find that the mind can settle down, the mind gets more under control. You have a greater sense of well-being, because as that chant stated just now, what do we have in life? Well, we're going to be subject to aging and illness and death and subject to separation. These aren't things we look forward to, but they're things you have to prepare for. Unfortunately, we do have an out through our actions. That's what that fifth reflection was about. That you can make a difference by the way you act. And acting here doesn't mean just acting with your body, but also with your speech and especially with your mind. If you can train yourself to act skillfully, you don't have to suffer. And this is what we're doing as we're meditating. We're learning a skill. And we're using the same qualities of mind that you need in a skill. Suppose that you're playing the piano. On the one hand, you have an idea of what you want the piece to sound like. That's your will. And then you have to pay attention to what you're doing right now, how you're playing right now. And then you have to keep in mind what you've been playing. Because sometimes what you've been playing hasn't gone right in line with what you willed. So the question is, do you want to bring it in line with what you originally willed, or is what you've actually done something better? So this is the skillful way of bringing your intentions for the future and your memories for the past to bear in the present moment. This is how the mind gets trained. You're developing qualities of ardency, alertness, mindfulness. And these are qualities you're going to need in every aspect of life, whatever the task, in school, at work, at home. You need to have these three qualities well developed if the task is going to go well. We have to realize that happiness comes through our actions. It doesn't come just through things floating our way. It comes through the qualities we develop in the mind, so that regardless of what comes floating your way, you know what to do with it so it doesn't create suffering. This is our big problem in life, is that we want happiness, but the way we handle our experiences causes stress and suffering for the mind. So we have to learn how to handle things in a new way, so that regardless of what comes, good or bad or indifferent, we know how not to suffer. So remember these three qualities you want to bring. The will that pushes you into the future or that f makes plans for the future. You're planning to stay here with the breath, so you want to do it well. And remember, it's that quality that allows for discernment to arise. And then your attention to what you're actually doing, the results you're getting, and your memory of any useful lessons that you want, may want to bring to bear when things either are going well or are not going well. You remember what to do. You remember where to stay, where to stay focused, how to breathe. You bring all these things together. And you train the mind so that instead of producing stress and suffering, it produces happiness. It knows how to give rise to well-being. That's the most important skill you can develop.